Uh, was up very early this morning at a Nutrition Solutions breakfast pancakes and come straight down to the Fox Studios here to be on the breakfast show, the morning show. Uh, we came here six weeks ago, it's like deja vu, for the half Ironman and um, we're back down here again to discuss that and discuss the Man of Iron video series. I'm Chris Gethin. I'm going to be training to prepare for an Ironman. I'm giving myself six months, and we're going to do it. 739, he is back, friends. Chris Gethin, the Man of Iron, creator of the Man of Iron web series. The six month of training just about over. First of all, thank you so much thank for you coming much for back on the show here this morning. Something that some of your critics were saying is, how are you going to be able to have so much muscle and be able to actively compete? You've been working on this. What have the results shown in the past couple of months? Uh, the results have shown. I just had a test, my six month test done on Monday, so I'd actually put on about 3.8 pounds of muscle and I'd lost around 4% in body fat over the past six months and my cardiovascular fitness went from a VO2 max of 44 which is categorized as good uh, up to 52 which is categorized for my age group as superior. So thank you so much again for joining us here this morning and good luck this weekend. I'll need it thanks. <laughs> So it is the Saturday here now, the day before the Ironman, Judgment Day, baby. So I got here on the Thursday. I wanted to get up here in plenty of time just to relax, unwind, detox my brain a little bit. I reckon about 77% of my recovery is going to come from my mental aspects of just detoxing, debriefing, and kind of filing everything, if you will. So I wanted to come here and put myself in a completely different frame of mind. I'm driving my car slower. I'm, when I, I'm swimming every day to visualize the race, I'm visualizing it being hard. I'm visualizing myself getting blisters. I'm visualizing myself having cramps so I have no surprises on the day. My parents arrived this morning as well. Knowing they're here, of course that gives me a lot of pressure, but my father was with me for many, many years when I raced motocross every weekend. So he knows what it's all about. So it feels good to have somebody there where you can kind of mentally communicate with without verbally having to. I'm very, very happy with this preparation, considering that I haven't been put in half the amount of hours that a lot of triathletes put in to an event to be prepared for an Ironman. But I make sure that I was very efficient with my training. I was doing a lot of trail running, running on curved treadmill, which is a lot tougher than a general treadmill. I was doing hill repeats. I was doing some runs with a weighted vest. So ensuring that I am efficient with the time that I was putting in. You know, same with working out. You see some people training for a couple of hours. I don't do that. I train for about 45 to 60 minutes, but I make sure that it's intense and efficient. However, on the weekends, you know, I was spending my time getting comfortable being uncomfortable, going for like six hours on the bike, going for like two hours on a run, because that has to be done. So I have to have an understanding of what my body utilizes as fuel, how many calories, how much hydration, and getting it used to being out there for that amount of time, I'm definitely in a better place mentally by doing this sort of training. And it's allowed me to seek and understand my body a lot better. Oh, the training didn't go as well as I'd hoped in the beginning, because I think every injury that I've had over my entire life kind of surfaced. Like an ankle injury that I had many years ago, that started to hurt. My groin injury, that started to hurt. My shoulder, that become a problem. It still is a problem. And what I noticed in the beginning, I did start to overtrain. Like combined with the amount of volume that I'm used to training, didn't complement the disciplines that I was putting in with the swim, bike, run. That volume clashing with another form of volume just led to overtraining and I wasn't able to put the muscle on that I wanted to. So then I had to reevaluate my training and I brought the volume of my weight training back. I started increasing my weight and I found my body started to respond then. So that's only gonna come through trial and error. That's only gonna come through the mileage that I put in to back up the knowledge. You know, that's why I have to go through these transformations with the viewer so I can experience it myself so then I can better relate and educate it to the viewer there. So the check-in here for the full Ironman is completely different to the half Ironman. 696, yeah. No one's got their transition bags. Uh, Matt's out here now, so I won't leave that here. Weeks ago, we just dumped the bike there, 
put the transition mat, left your stuff, and that was it. I showed up the next day with my nutrition, with my food. But then I found out literally about an hour ago that we have to bring in the bags with us. So it's a completely different now with the special needs bags. This is something that we didn't have in the half. Now we're going for 140 miles, so we need special needs bags. For the run, that's going to be at mile 17, and I believe at, on the bike it's going to be at like mile 77 or something. We will get to an area out on the run and out on the ride where we'll have our special needs, where I've putting extra nutrition, real solid foods, extra pair of socks. I've been told at that point on the run, you will crave some weird things. So I put a couple of Snickers bars in there as well. I honestly doubt that I'll eat them. I, I'm not into anything like that. Uh, you know, I've got my healthy sort of granola bars. I've got a lot of uh, energy balls that Sunshine made. Uh, those will do me fine. I'm looking at taking in an absolute minimum of 500 calories per hour. I found out that 500 calories seems to be my sweet spot. However, if it's relatively hot, it's a very hilly course as well. So I think I may have to punch that up a little bit more. These are the bags that I'll be carrying all my nutrition in. In both of these bags, I'm gonna have what's called these energy balls that has uh, you know, my recaged, my dates, my bananas, my oats my ginger, my cinnamon, et cetera, et cetera. I'll have the both, both in here. I'm gonna have uh, my hydration here and here and on a proper uh, bottle here that'll sit on the Aero bars. So in two of these hydration bottles, I'll have my hydrocharge, my fermented glutamine, my fermented BCAAs. This bad boy here is the one that will have my recaged in there as well. I'll also have some other foods like called picky bars and uh, backcountry bars, I'll have them on me as well. I'll have some Nutrition Solutions pancakes with me and Nutrition Solutions protein bars with me. And this will hopefully carry me far enough to uh, mile 77, I think it's 77. It's, that'll be where I'll be able to pick up my special needs bag and I'll have extra food there. We're gonna go grab some food now. Uh, my parents are gonna come and join us and uh, have a little bit bite to eat, chill out, and then uh, go back to the Airbnb and just have an early night's sleep. <laughs> hey, he's more fun. <laughs> Woke up at 2.30 this morning and I need to finish before 11.30 tonight. So it's nearly 24 hours awake, you know. Exercise, that's why I just gotta make sure that I got so much food, fuel, and caffeine with me. So I've got the pure calf, caffeine tabs. I haven't had caffeine for a couple of weeks now. I wrote out my timing splits on my hand there just so I can memorize them from the half. So I did the swim in 42 minutes last time. I did the bike in three hours 10 and I did the run in two hours 17. So I'm gonna double that and then distribute another hour on top of that for obviously you know, pacing, exhaustion, going at a slow, you know, much slower pace, eating more, more bathroom breaks, etc., etc. The only thing that worries me after an event such as this is that I, I, can, I can tend to cross into an abyss of nothingness and kind of fall into a bit of a depression because I've been so focused on one goal. And then that goal goes, it's like, okay, where does my, where's my structure now? I stopped bodybuilding in 2009 because I had no difference in satisfaction whether I came first or second and I'd still fall into depression after because now I had no intense goals. This is an intense goal again. So that's my only worry. But this time I've just focused so much more on the journey and using it as an opportunity, like I said, to kind of be more self-aware and acknowledge the journey that much more, which, you know, we've always heard. Yeah, acknowledge the journey as opposed to the end result. And that's why I'm not worried about the result. You know, my win is going to be just crossing that line. It's not a position. Hey man, I know it's the big day, so I wanted to reach out and send some positive vibes and love over to you and tell you something that I, I've told you before, but it's only fitting that I say it again now. And Chris, that is that I'm so fucking proud of you. 
go prove all these motherfuckers, naysayers, haters, doubters, all the people that don't believe, go prove them wrong and do what you've been doing your entire life. To me, you're already an Iron Man. Proud of you. I love you to death. Go get what's yours. First race, good for you. 969. All right, I'm gonna get it on both your arms. And no one's gonna remember if I came within 15 hours or 16 hours. They will remember if I finished or not. I'd say the mass start for this was pretty much the same as the half, as several hundred of you jumping in at the same time. You know, I just stayed very close to the left-hand side, so I had the direct lines of the buoys in front of me, and so I could breathe to my right and see everybody on this side. And I would kind of use that as a marker to ensure that I'm going in a relatively straight line. You, know, you get punched, you get kicked, but you're punching and kicking people too. It's to be expected. When I did the first loop, I made sure that I had a gel underneath my arm because I know I'm a bigger guy. I go through calories very fast. And I'm so glad that I did so I could do that second lap. I honestly feel that if you can get your efficiency down, if you can swim a mile, you can swim two miles. As long as you relax, that's the main thing. So when you come out of the water, it just knocks off your balance. I was dizzy. Uh, I was trying to reach for my wetsuit strap. I couldn't reach it. I had a volunteer help me. But then I took my time, pretty much walked it. I jogged a little bit, but I remember when I did the half, I kind of ran it, uh, thinking, I'm, you know, I need to shave off seconds here. I don't need to shave off seconds. I just need to finish this thing. I felt like I got my groove from the very beginning because I'd used so much visualization before. I was just going through the motions now. You know, I didn't get a puncture, I didn't get any knee problems. There's nothing that was a real surprise. glad that I did because I went through it all uh, but it was just enough it was just enough you know I want to eat as much solid food as I possibly can on this bike because I know I'm probably going to go have to go over to softer more liquid nutrition and gels when I get to the run crazy long hills there. The last steep hill, it felt like I was up three more gears than I should have been, because it felt so difficult. My legs felt heavy. And that's when I thought, okay, on the next downhill, I'm really gonna rest. I'm gonna try to stretch out my calves, stretch out my hamstrings, because I gotta run after this. When I removed myself of my helmet and all that sort of stuff, just put my race number on and uh, just started off. And I felt good straight away. 
I made sure that I looked at my Garmin to make sure that I wasn't going any faster than any 11 minute pace because I remember when I did the half, I started running at like a eight, eight minute 15 pace. And I thought this feels really good and comfortable, but it's your mind playing tricks with you because you've been going at a much faster pace on the bike, it feels normal to run at a faster pace. Nothing sucks more than having to walk through a race. Really had to mentally push myself to run to the next post, run to the next corner, run to the next aid station. I wanted to go very, very slow, but know that I could run it the whole time. on his own like he's got miles to do on his own but I want to make sure that he knows I'm there when he comes back around at that stage I know I'm finishing this event there's no doubt about it I just got to keep going and knowing that last week I'm pulling 500 pound deadlifts just seven days ago wow it's a great life that you can live. These environments and these sports can coexist if done correctly and efficiently. I feel absolutely ecstatic that not only did I finish the race, I wanted to get you know within the 17 hours and to finish a couple of hours under that, I'm really happy. This time I took my time in the swim, took my time on the bike. So when I got to run, I felt okay. It wasn't so bad. I didn't perspire as much. I was able to stay that much more hydrated. We only prepped for six months. And, you know, we lived the life as a bodybuilder, training like a bodybuilder and able to recuperate and not put in the amount of hours that a triathlete normally puts in. And over a six month period, I think, you know, we got a very respectable result. I'm having a lot of trouble moving today. Uh, my quads are okay, my calves, my hamstrings, everything is okay except for my flexors. My flexors are just so tight from having to lift these thighs up. So I definitely had trouble getting in bed last night. Before I went to bed, I had an ice bath for like 15 minutes and getting out of bed, trying to put my shorts on, trying to get down the stairs, attempting to get in and out of the car is definitely an arduous task. I definitely don't feel as bad as I did in the, in the half, you know, and I think, you know, when I look at the overall timing of the event, and that's because I pushed it much harder in the half, you know. By talking to me before, he was looking, you know, at the hours, you know, 14, 15, 16 hours was going to be a good time if he can pace himself. So when we could see he's like a mile away, you know, that's it, he's done it, you know. And some guys coming over that finishing line were awesome. And others, you know, were just, they needed almost to be carried, they could get through it, you know. But he came through, storming through. And we videoed that and it looked really good. And I was so proud of him, you know, to do it. It like, took me back to the first time he told me he wanted to do an Ironman. So now here he is about to cross the finish line. He had a plan, he stuck to the plan, and he proved everyone that doubted him wrong. Um, I mean, he put on muscle, dropped fat, and completed the Ironman. I, I don't know, you know, I mean, like, he did it.
specifically, this has been designed for the bodybuilder. Because I'm a heavier person, I've had to run a little bit differently. Because I'm a heavier person, I've had to focus a little bit differently on my swim, you know, to continue that I, to ensure that I have the buoyancy. And not only that, just to ensure that I can recover enough to have bodybuilding and an extreme endurance athleticism. And I've just proven now that this program works. You know, I go through these programs myself to see if they are applicable and it works.